This is the lecture for J.P. Messina's The Postulate of Private Right in Kant's Semi-Historical Principles of Property. Uh, there are three topics in this lecture. So the first is the idea of a system of usufruct. So I don't know, maybe this word has shown up uh, already, but maybe it hasn't. In any case, it gets more use in this article than it has earlier. And so uh, just to explain what this means. So uh, it first shows up, I think, on the second page. Uh, Messina is describing an argument against Kant or against an interpretation of Kant. And the worry is that uh, Kant establishes at best that a system of usufruct, which tolerates private use but not private ownership, is justified. So what is a system of usufruct? I mean, you sort of get an explanation. It tolerates private use, but not private ownership. But like, what exactly is going on? So the system of usufruct that we're imagining is um, every, there's, you know, we live in a society, we live in civil society, and nobody is allowed to own any property. So no property belongs to anybody. Uh, the hammer is not your hammer or my hammer. Rather, uh, you can just sort of use whatever you'd like. So uh, if there's a hammer sitting there, I can pick it up and use it on my house. And then when I put it down, somebody else can pick it up. And so we've talked about this possibility in class before. So it came up, for instance, in uh, Hassan when he was describing uh, how things work in the state of nature for Kant. And so this is not a new idea. Uh, I just want to be clear that like this is the idea that's being imagined when we talk about usufruct, and specifically this is not the state of nature. We're imagining a society sort of working like this, like in this society all property is owned in common, uh, and so nobody owns the property really, it just belongs to the society. So that brings us to the second point in the lecture, and that's just to sort of describe in broad outlines what to be taking from this article. So there's sort of two separate points in this article, and they're both interesting. I mean, there, there's lots of points in the article, but two sort of main ideas in the article, they're both interesting. One is this idea about um, exclusion and the use of property and a principle that is called uh, dominion, it, it kind of in all capital letters. And so one of the points that this article is making is a little divorced from Kant, or not divorced from Kant, but it's it's not something we've talked about before, but it's uh, the extent to which a system of usufruct or some other system of public property, of sort of social property ownership, to what extent that requires excludability, excludability is part of dominion, and what are these ideas? You don't know yet, but just to prepare you for going into the article, this is going to be one topic that Messina talks about. And this is in section two, section two. So section two is in large part about that. That's an interesting point and that's good stuff. Like it's worth thinking about that and whether you agree or disagree with Messina. It's again, less directly focused on Kant then the second point. So the second point is like about Kant. And so then in section three, uh, Messina is arguing like what does Kant's theory look like? And then also in section one, we have an argument about Kant. And so uh, sections one and three are more directly engaging with things we've talked about so far. So you'll see the whole article is about the postulate of private right. And you'll see in sections one and three, he's talking about Hassan and so on. So uh, that's just to say, Section two will be a bit about a departure. It's like a new topic, still important, still relevant, but that's like a new thing to get from this article. And then section one and three are back into a debate that we've been having already. And this is just, we'll get another perspective on this debate that we've been having already about the postulate of private right and what the state should look like in terms of property and whether the state can redistribute property and stuff. So that's also what this article is about. So those are kind of the two main ideas in the article. Finally, uh, the third point. So long ago, like a week or two ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, in one of the class discussions, we were talking about uh, leaving the state of nature and how this is supposed to work and Kant's idea that you can sort of um, you, you can like coerce people into joining civil society like you 
uh, people have to be ready to join civil society, and if they aren't ready to join civil society, they're doing it wrong. And people were sort of asking, how does this work? I think Aman's question was the main one. It's like, what? How, how are we supposed to picture this going? And I said, here's a way you can imagine it going. You just set up civil society and you say, all right, civil society is here, now deal with it. And there was sort of some confusion about how this would work. I talked a bit about that. Uh, but this article gives me a sort of a chance to elaborate on what I was talking about, like the picture I was setting up, and then uh, sort of contrast it with what Messina gives us in this article, which is a different view. So I'm not going to explain Messina. I'm just going to point to uh, Messina. And what I'm going to point to is him on, I th yeah, mostly page 16 and 17. Um, yeah, actually, and here's, the, I think, the relevant passage, too. So he says, so this is quoting Kant. Provisional acquisition, however, needs and gains the favor of a principle for determining the limits of possible rightful possession. Because this acquisition precedes a rightful condition, and as merely preliminary to it, is not yet conclusive, the favor of pro provisional acquisition does not extend beyond the moment at which other participants consent to its establishment. And then the important, the most important sentence, but if they are opposed to entering it, the civil condition, and as long as their opposition lasts, this favor carries with it all the effects of acquisition in conformity with right, since leaving the state of nature is based upon duty. So that's important. There's, that's actually not the passage I had in mind 100% where Kant says we have to leave the civil condition. But of course, he, you know, he's saying this all over the stuff that we've read. P people have to leave the civil, or sorry, people have to leave the state of nature and enter the civil condition. We have a duty to leave the state of nature. And so you can sort of compel people in various ways. So Messina uh, gives a sort of discussion of how this would work. He sort of tells a story about how this might work according for Kant, and then you, so you wage war basically, and there's certain uh, outcomes. And so uh, that's one place you could look to for a description of how is this supposed to work? What am I supposed to be picturing here? This sort of acquisition in the state of nature, and then suddenly we set up a society, what's going on? So we get Messina's picture, and just to sort of give my competing picture, which just to be clear, like I'm not making this up, this is <laughs> something other people uh, say too. So what does the competing picture look like, or what does one competing picture look like? Because there's just lots of views about this. So the thought is, look, Kant says we have this duty to leave the state of nature and set up a civil society. And the picture is, how is this supposed to work? Well, what is it to be in a civil society? And in fact, what is the topic of this book? It's the topic of uh, right, and right is all the external uh, laws that can be uh, enforced through coercion. And so what we're trying to figure out is we're, we're like setting up a coercive state and the state is going to have laws, and those laws are going to be enforced. And so the question is, what can the state look like, and what is the justification for this? And we know that Kant says everybody has a duty to get into the state as fast as possible. You Really, your only duty in the state of nature is get out of the state of nature and set up the state. What is the state? Well, it's a sort of rightful situation which is coercing people in various ways. And so how do you like uh, achieve this duty of setting up the state? Well, you set up the coercive institutions and you start implementing them on people. So you set up the police and you set up the taxation and you set up all this stuff and you say, okay, everybody, now it's time to go along with this. And so uh, like, <laughs> how does that work? I mean, look, you set up the institution and you start enforcing them on people. And once you have that, you've left the state of nature, you now have a state, and now you have people who are either going along with the state, or they aren't. If they're going along with the state, no problem, they're fulfilling the duty that Kant says in terms of leaving the state of nature. If they're not going along with the state, well, you're going to force them to, you're coercing them to, the police are going to put them in jail or something. And so it's sort of people kind of have no choice but to enter the state uh, when you do this. And so uh, like you're in the state of nature and there's somebody right over there and we're trying to imagine, well, how do we, how do we like coerce them into the state? Do we have to get them to sign a contract or something? No, it's very simple. You just wave at them and say, hello, you're in the state. So we have these laws, by the way, 
And if you break any of them, you're going to jail. And you say that to everybody, just sort of simultaneously. And so there you go. You have a state. And in fact, you have a state as soon as you start coercively enforcing things, because that is what the state is, and that is what the state's job is. Uh, so hopefully that sort of makes sense. That's the sort of picture of leaving the state of nature, which is, it's very simple. <laughs> just start coercing people according to the principles of right. Of course, any old coercion is not going to work. You can't just start putting people in jail for anything. You have to coerce people according to the principles of right, and the only coercion that is justified is a hindrance of a hindrance and so on and so forth. So you say, hello, welcome to the state. Here's our list of laws. And the laws are supposed to be good laws, the laws that Kant says you're supposed to have, not just any laws you draw up. But that's the basic picture. This leaves out one question, which is, how do we get like different states? Like, why not just one giant state? How do we have borders? And that's a good question. And so um, <laughs> we'll see. You know, we'll get to Kant's uh, more international stuff in more detail. We already saw it on Wednesday, but we'll see more of it uh, in the coming weeks.